Hi guys. Do you ever feel like you're drowning? <sighs> Hi, I'm Kylie Ryan of the Body Confidence Movement uh, that I started with my partner Bianca Iono and I have just come out of the swimming pool and I wanted to share with you some epiphanies I had while I was doing my laps. So if you ever feel like you're drowning in life and that everything is against you and you just can't seem to get your head above water, listen up. Um, so when I was a kid, I used to have these uh, nightmares about drowning and I grew up in a rural area dry, uh, riding horses and, um, and not doing much swimming. So even though my mum taught us to swim when we were kids, I was never very good. So at school carnivals, the like one or two times a year that I would swim, I would be the kid at the school carnival that would like be forced to do the 50 meter race and like be drowning halfway up the pool, terrified, feeling like she couldn't make it to the end because I was just, I didn't have any practice, right? And it instilled in this, in me, this terror of water and the pool and drowning and who knows, maybe I used to live in Atlantis or something. And, um, and so my husband is a surfer and so he spends a lot of time at the beach and we spend a lot of time at the beach as a family. And, and every summer I go through this <gasps> of, of him <laughs> helping me when I go into an ocean where there's big waves. And we often do that over summer. And so I've always wanted to become really good, a really good swimmer. But <clears throat> circumstances, no pool nearby, you know, not convenient, what have you. So I never have. I've never been, never been able to action that, uh, action that dream until now. Now that I've moved to this new area in the Sutherland Shire, then there is a pool that's like four minutes drive from my house. So I'm at my about 10th swimming practice, laps practice, and I finally have the right flippers so I don't feel like I'm gonna drown. I have my goggles. Uh, just last time I bought the swimming cap thing, and each time I've done the laps, it's gotten slightly easier, and I still feel like I'm, I feel less like I'm gonna drown now that I have these giant flippers, because um, they help me get to the end of the pool. But what I realized today in my like 10th practice laps was at about the, I don't know, 10th, 15th lap or something, I finally had this, that had this point where it was like, because normally I would just sprint to the end to get to the very, to the end of the pool and then gasp at the end like this. <gasps> because I was sprinting to get to the end and just doing all I could to just get to the end so I could get my head out of the water. And and then finally, at one point in my swim today, I went, oh, what if I stopped trying to race to the end and just actually enjoyed the swimming? What if I just tried to do it really slow so I was enjoying the swimming instead of just racing to the end? And my body started to relax and I started to notice and pay my, pay more attention to the the patterns of the the patterns of the light in the water and the bubbles as i could see the bubbles as my hand went through the water and the the sound of the bubbles popping against my my swim cap and i had this really you know amazing epiphany about how often we feel like life is against us and that we are not held and that it's not safe and that there's this very deep unconscious adversarial vibe with the with the world around us like we have to race to the end race to the goal get to the thing and you know that old quote it's not the just it's the journey not the destination that actually the kind of deeper truth of that actually sunk in for me today in the pool of how often we feel like we need to race to the end to get to the goal so that we'll, you know, get our gold star or then we'll be safe or then we'll have achieved the thing that makes us worthy or makes us feel like we're okay. And in racing to the end, we miss the journey, right? We miss the experience and, 
And in racing from one goal to the next goal to the next goal to the next goal, we actually miss our life because you're not present in the moment that you're in. You're running away from something that happened in the past or fantasizing about something that is going to happen or that you'd like to happen in the future and you're not actually, your energy is not in your body now. And so while I was swimming and like slowing down my strokes and focusing on the bubbles and the patterns on the water, my body started to relax and I actually found that the swimming became easy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then instead of counting my laps till the time when I could get out and um, and that I was done, suddenly I didn't want to stop. I wanted to like look at the I wanted to look at the patterns of the water and I wanted to listen to the bubbles against my ears. And so then even when I got a cramp in my foot and the water started getting into my ears, I was like, oh, this is inter these are interesting sensations. Whereas in the past, that would have derailed me it made me panic and made me feel like I need to stop and stretch and stretch out that that leg instead I just let the leg rest and I just let the water take me and I was like what if the water is my friend what if the water is going to help me heal this cramp <sighs> and then my body started to relax and then I was able to I was able to relax that cramp in that swim and just keep swimming even through the challenges. So even through the cramp, even through the water getting in my ear and irritating me, I was able to, uh, I was able to keep going because I relaxed and allowed life to support me, allowed the water to support me. So my whole life, I felt like water is an enemy and that it's going to drown me. And anytime I turn my back, anytime I let go of control, or anytime I stop, you know, trying to control the, the situation, that the water would take me down and drown me. And I realized that this was an unconscious fear I've been carrying until this very moment, a few minutes ago in the pool. And finally, that that belief came to the surface of my consciousness and I was able to let it go and go, wow, what if, you know, like my husband says, who is a surfer and who, you know, the, the waves pounding him on <laughs> the waves pounding him on the sand when he's surfing and he like dives under the thing and gets pummeled by the waves that would terror that would have terrified me and he always would be like, no, it's fun. You just relax and you know that eventually you're going to pop up again. And I never understood that, but now I do. I still probably might find it a bit challenging to, you know, be pummeled under the waves, but now I can relax because I know that I can swim and I have my swimming fitness. <sighs> and so it relates, you know, so deeply to the work that Bianca and I do with women with their body confidence because so often women approach so often women and men approach a a weight loss goal approach a body change goal as you know just wanting to race to the destination just wanting to race to the point where you've lost that weight or you've changed your body and you've um you've got that aesthetic result that makes you look good but sometimes beauty is not in the picture perfect perfectly lit made up face uh, end goal sometimes it's in the goggle faced uh, bare faced natural joy of the journey in the everyday moments of life and so uh, my encouragement for you today is to think about where in your life you are racing to the end where in your life are you trying to race to some goal <sighs> And feeling like the world around you is an enemy in some way, that it's not supporting you? What if instead you could focus on relaxing your body, bring your attention back into your senses and start to notice the beauty around you in this very moment, in this very body? So where can you notice the beauty and the joy and the Blender, the awe that is around you in this very moment. The more you can bring your attention and focus into this very moment, then it allows you to commit 
to the practice, to the daily practice, the stacking of habits that is required to actually get that goal. So it's one of the ultimate paradoxes of life. The more that you set that goal but then let it go and just commit to the daily practice of what's required, then you will easily reach that goal and more without stress, without, you know, without upset. And even when there's challenges along the way, you'll, oh look, it's 11-11. And even if there's challenges along the way, you will be able to relax and allow yourself to be carried through those challenges and not let them derail you, but instead allow you to just adjust your course slightly to account for those challenges and keep going because the journey actually becomes joyful. So if you would love to learn how to take this kind of philosophy and approach into your health and well-being journey and stop trying to race to the end when you reach that magical dress size or um, or number on the scales and can finally be worthy and you're instead you're just punishing punishing yourself all along the way if you'd like to learn how to bring this kind of grace into your health and well-being journey then join Bianca and I on our next webinar it is Gosh, we've been putting together an incredible webinar that will teach you the fundamental foundations of our 30 years of experience, of our combined 30 years of experience to help you understand how you can live in a happy, healthy body every single day of your life and enjoy the journey because your body is here to allow you to experience the joy of life and not just race to the end where you get to have some magical dress size when suddenly you'll be worthy and everything will be magically fine. <sighs> I think that's it. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and I'll speak to you soon. I'll pop the link below so that you can join our webinar if you feel called to it. It's next Friday around lunchtime. And I would look forward to sharing more insights with you there. Lots of love. Bye.